Hey guys, welcome to Living It Up Raw. Welcome to Bangkok. We are here for the launch of this, the all new Royal Enfield Hunter 350. The very first roadster from them, at least in this category. First impressions, I like what I see. And that was not really the case when I first saw the pictures. But in the flesh, I think it looks really, really good. It's definitely in terms of fit and finish, a step up from whatever we have seen even on the Meteor or the Classic 350. It looks like a product where they've spent a lot of time in development, which they have, and that shows. This scale section, I absolutely love the design of the alloys, the pleated seats, of course, the color scheme, very flashy, very fresh, very young. Even though in terms of the engine, it borrows the same engine from the J-Platform engine from the Classic 350 or the Meteor, makes the same power, 20 horsepower, 27 newton meters of torque. But the rest of the bike is all new. So the main aim for Royal Enfield behind this motorcycle was to tap into people who are fond of the brand, but not necessarily identify with either the Classic 350 or the Meteor, which is a focused tourer. So this is where it slots in, you know, to give someone a chance to come into the Royal Enfield family, but something which looks fresher. So this is by far the most compact, the lightest and the sportiest Royal Enfield that you will see. So this is the very first Royal Enfield, as far as I can remember, to feature a 17-inch front wheel. And to live up to the sporty tag, of course, they've also shed a lot of weight. This is almost... So I think 181 kgs wet, which is almost 14 kgs lighter than the Classic 350. Also, in terms of wheelbase, it's almost 20 mm shorter compared to the Classic 350. And when you compare it also uh, with the Classic 350, there are some elements which are similar. So you have a 30 liter tank, which is similar. You have the same amount of suspension travel at the front and back. You have 130 mm travel at the front, 102 mm at the back. But of course, you get linear springs instead of progressive springs here. Also, the braking setup is exactly the same. You have a 300mm disc at the front, you have dual channel ABS, but you get chunkier tires. You have a 110 section tire at the front and a 140 section tire at the back. But that's the case in case of this variant, the Metro variant of the Hunter 350. There's also a retro variant which comes with the spoke wheels instead of uh, the alloys on this particular model. So that's the motorcycle, the Hunter 350, built to excel in an environment like this, the urban jungle. So let's go and see how she does. So here we are in Bangkok on the Hunter 350. And right off, what you can see is this is by far the most compact Royal Enfield that I've ridden. And so quick on its feet, so agile. And I don't remember the last time I could say that on a Royal Enfield. This is exactly what they've worked on to make sure that this thrives in the urban jungle. When I first looked at the machine, it looked a tad small for tall riders, but after sitting on it, it doesn't feel that way. It feels nice and spacious, I like the ergonomics. Even the seat, I mean, again, it's made for the urban environment. So you will be good on it for the short rides, but for the longer ones, I recommend looking at the accessory seat, which has a little more padding. They'll be more comfortable for the longer hauls. On the engine front, I was excited because this is a solid 15 kgs, 14 kgs lighter than the classic 350. But to be fair, I will have to ride it back to back with the Classic to really notice the difference. It feels very similar. But having said that, I love this engine. The J-Platform engine is so engaging. It doesn't matter in the fourth gear, as soon as I get on the gas, it still pulls. This is the feeling I love. Very few vibrations. If at all you can feel them, the buzz creeps in. Uh, in the higher revs, in the higher end of the spectrum. 
in the city essentially all you need is a third gear if you want quick overtake this is the gear pulls really strong and on the highways the fourth and fifth gears are a peach but yeah if you try to flog it then you'll not really enjoy it as much even though the rest of the motorcycle will urge you on to do just that especially in terms of the suspension setup as well this is definitely on the sportier side on the former side it's not as supple as you expect or as we have come to expect from Royal Enfield so it gives you the agility you have a lot more connection with what the front is doing but it has come at the cost of uh, the ride quality you definitely feel these bumps a lot more than you did on the classic 350 or the meteor with the loss in weight i was expecting the braking to be that much better but uh, i haven't really noticed that the brakes have still left me wanting even though you have a solid 300 mm disc at the front but yeah that very well could be down to the tires not a big fan of the ca tires because yesterday when we went to the go-kart track to understand better the agility that this bike brings to the table uh, I did not feel a lot of confidence on the front tipping it into corners there's not a whole lot of feedback coming through and also when you really get hard on the brakes it doesn't stop as well as you expect so I feel the same motorcycle at the same track but with stickier tires would have been twice as much fun and another thing I noticed when we were vlogging the bike yesterday was the heat something which I did not notice on the classic 350 even when we were riding that reviewing it in Goa which was much much hotter but yesterday on yesterday's ride even though it was in the night after all that vlogging, the bike definitely felt like it was heating up a lot. There was a lot of heat coming onto your legs. It very well could be down to the engine being brand spanking new. And we had given it a flocking. But uh, that's something I would look out for when I ride it longer when we get this back in India. Also from the practicality standpoint, the seat height is still quite low at 800 mm and even though you have sacrificed the ground clearance uh, with the new 17 inch wheels you still have 150 mm of ground clearance to scale our tallest of speed breakers something which you have not encountered here in thailand but that would not be a problem um, when you go back to india I still cannot believe it to be in a foreign country after the pandemic for the first time to ride a motorcycle and not just any motorcycle this one the much awaited Hunter 350 it looks nothing like any other Royal Enfield that we have seen before in fact it looks nothing like any other bike in this category it's very sporty it's very fresh and therein also lies the problem because at the heart of it it's still the same J platform engine which we have come to love so much on the classic 350 if you ride that engine like how the bike looks you're in for a disappointment because that's not what the engine is meant to do it's meant to be ridden in the higher gears leisurely with you making the most of the strong mid-range and chugging along also in terms of the riding dynamics in terms of the ride quality because this bike is meant to be ridden here it's designed for the urban jungle right but the suspension setup is definitely on the firmer side it's not very supple and that's one thing which we have come to expect from Royal Enfield is really good ride quality but then again if it's launched at a very attractive price point which we are all expecting it to be then uh, that would be a completely different story. So it would very well be a Royal Enfield in a fresh new Outar 
and still give you the experience which we have come to associate with Royal Enfield, especially in terms of that long stroke motor. So let's wait for the pricing and keep our fingers crossed. As you can see, the party is already started because Royal Enfield have just announced the pricing for the Hunter 350 and you can take it home, the retro variant for as low as 1 lakh 50,000 and you can go for the metro variant which is fully loaded with the alloy wheels and dual channel ABS for 1 lakh 68,900. That's some really aggressive, really competitive pricing because that's almost 30,000 less than the highest selling Royal Enfield to the classic 350. Really impressive pricing and what I like about it is also with this motorcycle, Royal Enfield have also taken a big step up in terms of the fit and finish. As an overall product, this is very impressive. It's not perfect, but then that's where the really lucrative price tag comes into play. Very good looking motorcycle, a really beautiful engine, as long as you ride it in the way it's supposed to be ridden. And yeah, at this price, you can definitely invest in uh, much better tires and have a whole lot of fun. So good job, Royal Enfield, really good job.